Hey guys, this is Eric with Inhouse Solutions, coming back with video number three in the 3D Lathe Tool series. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how to create part off blades and grooving tools. So, the first step here is going to be very similar to the last video. In this case, we're going to translate everything so that the holder is like the front of the holder, the front of the insert here is in line with the x-axis. So this one's pretty simple to do. I'm just gonna go to the transform tab, go to move to origin, and then I'm gonna select this midpoint right here. And now we're ready to start creating the tool. So I'm gonna go to the turning tab and go to the lathe tool manager. Then I'm going to right click up here, choose create 3D tool, name this part off blade. So this is a part off tool, but everything that we do here also applies to grooving tools. They work essentially the same. So I'm going to go to the next page. I'm going to start defining the blade. going to go through this pretty quickly since we've already gone over this a couple times in the other videos. So no need to uh, just keep reiterating the same thing. In the machine side connection here, I'm going to do named plane again. And this time it's going to be the back plane. So the reason for that is because I want it I want to have the it's like the back world plane so that it's at the front of the insert here. And then I'm gonna adjust the position in X, Y only so that we have some sort of mate between the blade and the holder later on. So the corner that I'm gonna pick is going to be the intersection between this edge and this edge. Because the way this is held, it's gonna sit up against this face and this face so that's, that's why. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to click on this gray dot so I can move around the gnomon. And then I'm going to press the I button on my keyboard, which is the hotkey for intersection. So now I can select this edge and this edge. And now the gnomon moves only in X, Y to that intersection point, but it stays in Z at the front of the blade. Now I'll press enter to confirm that. And let's see. So our blade is currently upside down, but that's okay because we're going to change that later on. So I'm going to do next and okay. And now I can start defining the insert. Again, very similar to what we did before. I'm just selecting from the graphics view. I can set this as a grooving and parting because that's the filter that I want to use when I'm looking for these types of tools. In this case, right or left hand doesn't matter because it can cut on both sides. So I'll go next. The corner radius. In this case, I probably can't select these edges. Um, due to like, I'm not sure if they're splines, usually sometimes on these like grooving inserts, you have a hard time selecting those, but I know it's eight thou. So I'm going to type that in, go next. I don't need to mate the insert to the holder. I do next. The cutting plane. In this case, I'm going to choose the bottom plane. So now my insert up direction is correct. It matches what I see on the screen, but I need to adjust this offset. So I select offset and then I'm going to go right here. The blade adjusts accordingly. I'll do next. I don't need to change anything in the boundary. The mounting uh, position in the machine, this looks right. It's vertical. I'm using top turret left spindle, clockwise. Everything looks good. Go next. I'll set the 
uh, tool center from two tangent edges. That looks good. I'm picking up on quadrant one. And for a grooving tool, it's really important that you specify the width. So the width I know for this tool is 157 thou and two tenths. And when I do that, now I see I have the other edge here. For a grooving tool, we don't really need to specify a side clearance height or end clearance angle. Really all we need is the width. So I'm good defining the tool, I can do next and finish. I'm not gonna bother with doing any defaults. So here's our blade fully defined, good enough for a tool path. But now we wanna add the holder as well so we can simulate that. So I'm gonna to go to the holder page or I'm gonna click on uh, holder, like the top item in the tree here, and then I'll right click and choose add component above. I'm gonna define this as a uh, separate component, like a modular component, like we did in the last tutorial. So I have the uh, select from library, and then I'll right click here and choose create holder. Then I'm gonna right click, choose define. And this is an adapter. And now I can select it from the graphics view. So I'm gonna select this and do okay. And I don't need to bother with any of the setup sheet stuff. I'll go to the next page. Now we want to define the machine side connection. So that one's pretty straightforward. It's gonna just be this face. But now the tricky one is the workpiece side connection. So I'll select, in this case, it's going to be this right here. Because I'm thinking about when I'm on the machine and I want to measure with a caliper, what's going to be the easiest thing to measure up against for the projection? Well, I, I'm going to do this face. So I select right there, but then I need to adjust the mounting position. Because right now, this position, remember we did the intersect point earlier on the, like on the actual blade itself? That point is going to match up with this point. So I don't want it here. I want it right here on this corner. So I select this point, I drag it over to there. And I think we might need to rotate this around. We'll see in a second here how it looks. But I'm going to leave it like that for right now. And then if we need to adjust it, we will. And then I'll just do OK. And next, OK, and OK. And I see actually that it looks OK. So I'm going to do OK. And what I want to check here is that the front edge of the insert lines up exactly with this face right here, which it does. And the blade is mounted correctly in the holder. So there's a couple other things I still need to do here. Because I added the holder on, it put an additional offset on the tool. So see now this blade is not up here where it should be. So let's fix that first. I'm going to right click on the insert and choose edit. And then I will go to the page that has the offset. That's the setup page. And I'm just going to adjust that offset. I found that also I was having some issues with um, how the insert boundary was being found. This is usually due to just how the insert was modeled. Typically with these grooving or parting off inserts, they're a little more complex. So I just bumped this tolerance up to two tenths and that seemed to fix it. So if you have issues, um, try changing this to two tenths and it will probably help. You, you'll have that issue. If you see a red box around insert or cutting definition, then just try changing that. And then the other thing that I wanna change here is I want this blade sticking out a bit. So I'm gonna go do that in the holder, just like I did for the boring bar. I edit 
the holder, go to the connections page, and then enable this projection adjustment. And I'm going to do 1.1 for right now. And then I'll do OK. And I'll do OK again. And now I just want to save the tool to my library. Just delete this one in there. I had done it once before. So just save this down, do OK, save the library. And now we can try creating an actual toolpath. So now I can actually test the tool out. We'll go create a grooving toolpath on this groove right here. I'm not going to rough. I'm just going to go right to finishing just so I can see if the tool is being compensated correctly. Goes into the groove and it's going into both corners correctly. So everything looks good. And now the last thing I can do is I can check uh, using it in a cutoff toolpath. So let's go to cutoff. And let's backplot that. And so I can see here that I actually don't have the blade sticking out far enough. So what I'll do is I'll just easily go into my toolpath, edit my tool, go to edit the holder, and I'll go to this projection adjustment. And I think the diameter of the part is actually two and a half. So I'll do like one and a half. So that should give us plenty of clearance. So now that's updated our assembly. Let's do OK. We'll update our tool, regen the toolpath, and we'll backplot it once again. And now we have plenty of clearance. So that's it for episode three in the 3D Lathe Tool series. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and dropping a like. If you have any questions or if you want to make any suggestions for future videos, you can leave a comment. The next video in the series that we're going to be looking at is how to create a drill as a 3D tool. So catch you in that one.